part two in biltong making. All right, we'll jump right into the next part of the biltong making, and that is the uh, the prepping of the meat. You know, the cutting it up, um, trimming a little bit, and um, mixing the brine and setting it in the brine. Um, so let's jump right to the video. It's click subscribe, uh, tell a friend, click the bell so you get the updates. Uh, I'll be doing uh, at least one more part to this, and then we'll talk more about different seasonings and things as time goes on. Um, but uh, yeah. Help, helps me a lot. Make sure you click the bell and click subscribe. Thanks. Okay, um, I've got uh, eye round or eye of round. I don't know what the, the difference is in, in the description, but that's what the package said. And that's a two pound piece, a little over two pounds, but I trimmed the fat off. And then I use Worcestershire, a good Worcestershire, and then good malt vinegar. But you can use pretty much any vinegar you want. And then my biltong seasoning. I've got it all formulated with all organic herbs and spices. And then I've got my jerk seasoning. I'm going to do the jerk seasoning separate. Um, I won't videotape that because the same process, just different seasoning. I'll just show you when it's done. So here I'm going to get that layer of fat off there. You could probably leave it. Um, take it off, leave it. I, um, I don't know that it, I mean, I leave a little bit on there because um, uh, it actually adds a little bit to, I don't know. It, it's whatever you want to do, really. I mean, it's, it's however you want to try it. So uh, trim the majority of that off. And then kind of figure out how you want the muscle long way. If this was just regular jerky, I might cut the the um, uh, the meat at the end grain and and just you know uh, uh, put it in the brine that way and get the flavor infused. Now I'm cutting this about a little bit greater than the thickness of my thumb is what seems to work out best for me. And um, and so I'll just keep doing that on this piece, taking those pieces about like that. And uh, it's a good length, you, you know, in the built-on cube, you can get it a little wider. Here at the end, this is where the stickies and things like that come out really well. So I'm going to cut off um, that, uh, that piece so I get these, these three rectangular chunks that are in there. And then, um, again, you want to pay attention to the grain here. And I'm going to cut with the grain long ways. So it's not like just right down the middle. It's just with the grain. So whatever it gives me that way. I cut them like that. So there's one decent strip and then uh, I'll divide that one. So I'm, I'm speeding this up here because it's it's kind of, you know, just every day, kind of just the, the chunks. Now this last piece, the one that had a little bit of fat on the back, um, I'm going to cut this one into one chunk and then strips. And I'm not going to take them down to the full, um, at this point, the full little sticky strips. And there's two ways of doing this. So I'm going to cut them about like that. Now, that's not quite as thick as the other ones. Um, so I set those off to the side like that. And um, so this is where you get involved in the different um, sizes of the, of the meat and how they dry. The thin ones will dry in just a few days. The really thick ones will take a lot longer. So um, I'm going to get these in the brine. And uh, I'll take my, that's how my biltong seasoning comes, my organic biltong seasoning. And a tablespoon in this glass container. And you want to do this in glass um, or, you know, I mean, maybe some of the plastics are fine. I don't know. I don't, I try not to do that. Um, and uh, so one tablespoon or teaspoon of my biltong seasoning. And then a half cup of vinegar. Um, now I use the malt vinegar. I've used... Um, uh, organic uh, apple cider vinegar. It's kind of strong. Uh, it tastes really good. I mean, it, it's fantastic, but I just really like using this. And uh, if you notice, I took the shaker top off of the vinegar because you, why sit there and flick it, you know, trying to fill it up by shaking a half cup into the cup. So, um, so, uh, and then a half cup of the Worcestershire and uh, give that a little uh, fork stir and then get the pieces right into um, right into the brine. Um, there's there's kind of oh you want to make sure that they're swimming in the pool up over their head. So get them in there. Um, you know make sure that they're uh, that they're submerged. Um, you're gonna want to you know maybe turn it at least leave it 24 hours. I've now that what you'll see in the second half of the video is. Uh, uh, biltong that I had let sit for um, was almost 48 hours, I guess. 
And so get them all in there, get them, get them nice and, you know, happy, swimming around and all the juice and everything. And it smells really good between the Worcestershire and the, and the, uh, uh, the malt vinegar. Um, it's just, it's just really nice. And you'll see how the seasoning starts to expand and, and stick to it. And it just comes out really nice. Um, so I'll get a cover on this and then, uh, I'll pop this in the fridge for at least overnight. Um, by the time I prep this, when you see me finishing this, cutting it up and hanging it, um, yeah, I just made the hand motion for stir, you know, flip it around as well. So that's that. Pop that in the fridge, like I said, at least overnight, 24 hours or more. Um, so here is a batch that, rather than doing it in the in the glass container because I needed that, I did that in, in the uh, Ziploc bag. Um, you see this is sped up because it's, it's just me patting off all the extra juices. And if you can see, there's seasoning that's stuck to it. And and uh, there's the different sizes, the same with this one, where it's got the the um, uh, the strips and then the, the square pieces. Square pieces are more like traditional biltong. See, there's a there's one that's towards the edge of the piece of meat, and it's got that angle to it. Um, you know, that, that one is, is, is more square. Um, there's a strip that I'll cut into stickies. There's a good good piece of traditional built on there. That's a great piece. That 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 that's an awesome piece of meat right there. That's gonna slice up really nice, much thicker than my thumb. And so then I've got the these other ones. Um, you can see that they're uh, uh, still a little moist. I'm gonna try to get as much of the of the brine off as possible to, to aid in the next phase of this. Um, and you see that it, that that one there was narrow on one side. It's just you know because you're cutting around into squares. So, but that's fine. It'll, however you want to use them. If you've got the hooks to make them stickies, then that's fine. So, um, again, I want to do this part in in glass. Don't use aluminum. Uh, it'll impart the flavor. Um, just be real careful. I don't need to use stainless because sometimes I think stainless makes things that way. So, take a plate. Uh, take your uh, Biltong seasoning. Um, remember, I took about a teaspoon out of that. It, the package is, is originally two ounces is what I have for two pounds of meat. And so you uh, press in the seasoning. Make sure you get uh, all six sides. So the four sides and then the two ends. And uh, so I'm going to speed this up because this is actually boring. And uh, we'll get the seasoning on everything. Um, now I'm going to set paper towels into the uh, glass container to act uh, as a uh, something that allows the juices to go somewhere. Sometimes I, I add a little rack that I could put in there and put them on the rack. Um, but it just, a, you know, spending a paper towel on this seems to work really well. Um, and I'm, I'm going to make some decisions on the fly here on which other pieces I'm going to do full size. Um, but that's, that's pretty much what I need to do with those. So let me get my paper towel base out of the way and I'll start to prep these pieces. Now, um, You'll notice as I start cutting them that um, the thicker pieces will still be pink on the inside, but but trust me, I experimented around with that. I trimmed off the browner part and then um, just dehydrated the strip of meat that was still pink, and it had all the flavor um, that the brown part had. So um, it, it didn't get stained, but it certainly absorbed the salt and it absorbed the uh, uh, the flavors of the uh, you know, of the spices that were in there, the coriander and the, um, the, the other spice, uh, the vinegar, um, Worcestershire vinegar and coriander. So anyway, so, um, here I'm slicing these into the stickies. Now you can see that the pink there on the inside, oh, run away, get back here. Um, can't go back to the pool now. Um, so I want to slice these, um, you know, about pinky size, maybe a little bit smaller. I say about the size of a pencil. And so now I'm going to take these and divide them in half. Um, the cleaver works really good. This is my own cleaver that I sell on my website. Um, let me get these cut up. And so, uh, this, this really works well. These are actually the stickies. So I'm going to speed up this next little section and I get these all prepped and then slow it down again when I get to the ones that were strips and you can really see the difference. So, um, fast forward. Don't cut this fast because you'll probably end up cutting yourself. The cleaver works really great because you get nice straight lines. I've got terrific kitchen knives. I wouldn't do any of this prep work with a serrated blade. Um, you know, save the Ginzu for cutting bricks and tomatoes, I guess. And um, so, um, yeah, so 
Now, those are the ones that are the strips that have the um, uh, that that have the more of the seasoning, more of the color right through the inside. Um, I've dried them separately with the full seasoning on it, and they do taste um, a little bit different. Uh, but you know, that's the thing about the biltong. It, it, if you do the same thing every time, you're going to get the same results. But but that can be kind of boring. Now you can see that they're they're brown right on through from the the Worcestershire and the vinegar kind of uh, starting that process. Um, and then the, the ones that, that were thicker, you got a little pink on the edge, but like I said, that, that's perfectly fine. You won't be able to really notice difference, maybe a little difference in flavor, uh, but like I said, not really a lot different than that. So that's probably all, uh, well, that is definitely all I'm going to do for the stickies. I've got uh, these two pieces that I made a, a kind of a second decision on. Uh, that other piece is still on the cutting board. So I'm going to get these all laid out and get the seasoning on there, get them all mixed and go press that seasoning in there, get it stuck to a good, and then get that on the paper towel, wrap up the last one, and uh, and then that's what I need to do. We'll put the last of the seasoning. I won't need any more from here. Uh, now what this is going to do is the, the, um, uh, the Redmond's salt that's in there is going to help to draw out a lot of the juices uh, help to dry it out. It'll firm up even more. And you'll see when I prep then the, the batch that's actually my jerky batch in the next video, um, I'm going to cut them into stickies after the uh, brining process and they become firmer. Um, they shrink down a little bit because the, the, the displaces the juices. So I'll cover that up, put it in the fridge. So that's how I prep um, that piece of meat. And uh, after that I did the same process for uh, another two pound piece with, that I'm going to do my um, my jerk seasoning. The jerk is really nice. Um, what I say about my jerk, a lot of people will stay away from it because I think it's too hot and spicy. Um, this particular jerk seasoning is is warmer than it is hot. Uh, so uh, you'll, you'll get a little heat off of it, uh, but I, you know, like I say, it's um, uh, it's more reggae than heavy metal. It, it It's a ton of flavor. It's really, really good stuff. Um, and then, uh, so my next video is the next part where we hang it, put it, uh, put it on the hooks. We're going to cut up the, uh, the biltong jerk seasoning into the stickies, then hang the full-size pieces. Um, you know what? I'll, I'll talk about that right now. Here are stickies, uh, the thin ones that, that, uh, that dry out really quick, and then the thicker ones and how they slice. I'll kind of um, show you how that, that looks, kind of get you going on, on wanting to do your own biltong. I, I think it's just terrific. It's easy to do. It takes a little bit of prep work. It takes a few days, um, but it's worth every every bit of it because it's so unique, so flavorful. Um, I had made uh, uh, eggs the other day and sliced it up and sprinkled it all over the top of the egg while I was doing uh, eggs sunny side up, and I put a cover on them so they steamed, and uh, uh, that it kind of rejuvenated all that beef and all that flavor. That was really, really good. That was better than bacon and eggs. Um, so, you know, experiment, have some fun with it. Um, you know, it, uh, as long as you follow the principles of making sure it's good and dry, making sure that you brine it with the salt and the vinegar, uh, that, that, uh, pretty much takes care of the bacteria. Keep your work areas clean, use the right knives. You shouldn't go wrong. It's really good stuff. So, uh, thanks again. Um, hey, make sure you click subscribe so you can see all my additional videos that go along with this. And, um... Yeah, click the bell so you get the updates and don't have to wait for them. And tell a friend if, uh, if this is something that's appealing. So uh, I don't see why it wouldn't be. It's good stuff. So thanks again. Talk to you soon. Look for the next video.